Welcome to the inaugural Fantasy Football Factory for the 2021 football season. I'm your new host, Ben Mint, Barstool Mitzi, joined by Stephen Shea. It's a new year, and we are excited to get this fantasy football podcast rolling with Barstool Sports and Miller Lite. Dude, I'm so excited for this. Fantasy football has been a big part of my life for the last 22 years. Uh, so I'm excited to get this rolling with you, with the Fantasy Football Factory. I'm excited because, you know, we're going to have a co-host or a, a podcast together every week. We're going to get to talk about football. And I'm just going to get to watch you squirm with Jameis Winston throwing interception after interception. But we're going to talk about some fantasy perspective, which he always is relevant. So it, it's uh, it's the best of both worlds for well, me. Well, first of all, I want to thank Hank, Nick Tarani, and Roan, who did a phenomenal job the last couple of years with the Fantasy Football Factory. They have punched their clocks out. Yep. And Mr. Shea and I have inherited this. It's a huge opportunity. We're thrilled to do this weekly. We've got a ton of fun ideas. We're going to partner up with the Barstool Sportsbook, a lot of prop bets. We're going to have a Sunday morning uh, quick show with actives and actives, some gambling, some start sits. We want to interact with you guys, too. Fantasy football is all about our listeners and supporters. We're going to be accessible for you guys as well with your start sets, your draft day dilemmas, your pickups, your drops. And, man, the world is our ocean on this thing because what an opportunity. And one of that, once again, our sponsors, Miller Lite, for giving us this chance. And today being the first one, Mr. Shea, we're going to get into the running back rankings, draft day dilemmas. Yeah, draft day dilemmas is going to be a, a, an exciting thing. Uh, a, new, a new segment, basically, for this show where every league – has uh, a guy who is going to be in an uncomfortable spot. It's going to be, they wish they had the pick before. We'll go through real-time scenarios about what happens when you have that fifth pick, when you have that eighth pick, when you have that 12th pick, and all the guys you want are off the board. The most relatable segment I think we're going to have on here, so we're going to get to that later in the show. Well, Mr. Shea, I feel like you're more than qualified. You help run our NFL draft coverage here at Barstool. You're I'm going to say our, our, one of our biggest NFL guys. Sure. And I have the utmost respect for your attention to detail. A little bit of my background in fantasy. Uh, five years ago, I actually was the first fantasy football radio hour in Louisiana. Uh, Playboy Marty, our producer as well. I want to give him a shout out. Martin Black going to be part of the show. Uh, what's up, Marty? Thanks, Ben. Uh, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, excited to be a uh, part of this. You know, we started our uh, fantasy show in Baton Rouge last year before we got hired at Barstool. And uh, had we not been hired at Barstool, we'd probably be getting ready to do that. So uh, it's pretty cool to be here, you know, full circle. Oh, yeah. Well, we're thankful to have you with us. Yeah. And I uh, love the team we've got. And I'm ready to get right to it, Mr. Shea. Yeah, I'm excited this year. You know, one of my claims to fame in the fantasy world is having formulated the zero RB strategy, which is very famous, came out very popularly in 2013. I have documented proof of 2009, 2011, 2012 using that. Um, I have some other strategies that a lot of people could really uh, advantageously employ. I'll go through one of those a little bit later in the show today. But we first want to thank our sponsors, Miller Lite. Miller Lite, uh, great tasting, less filling. I mean, if you love fantasy football, Miller Lite is going to be the beer you want to going to be drinking this this uh, during this season. No matter how strong your team is, football is unpredictable. If bad luck tanks your team one week, that's part of the game. But we got Miller Lite here to celebrate with us. We're going to enjoy it throughout the game. So when the gang's all here and the game is on, reach for the reigning champion of light beers. You can find Miller Lite pretty much anywhere beer is sold. I mean, any bar, grocery store, you know, uh, alcohol store. They're definitely going to have Miller Lite. Or you can go to MillerLite.com slash fantasy for delivery options near you. It's Miller time. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 96 calories, 3.2 carbs per 12 ounces. And that's actually, I actually switched to being a Miller Lite guy fairly recently. Like, oh, wow. Yeah, like two years ago because of actually the uh, the carb intake. Um, it is 3.2 carbs per 12 ounces. And that's like a huge difference from other competitors that you see in the space that, uh, you know, you can have a couple of those and, you know, you're feeling a little bit bloated. Miller Lite, great taste, less filling, which is part of their thing. Um, and it's, you know, makes you look better. So if you like looking good, if you like watching fantasy football, watching football on TV and your fantasy team, Miller Lite's the way to go. And also Miller Lite going to be sponsoring the Barstool Fantasy Football Draft, yes. which we are going to partner up with the Dozen Trivia this year, yes. which is very exciting. Uh, big stream at Honkers, the Dozen Champs last year, ready to do some fantasy. And I, I think that's going to be a whole lot of fun because you've already got natural built-in rivalries and it gets more Barstool personalities involved. I love that we are doing that this year because – you know, last year and in years past, it's been great to have little sectors of teams within Barstool. 
But now we actually have already built out teams, you know, the big screaming honkers, the yak, a lot of different teams that are going out of office. Uh, a lot of different teams are going to be going head to head. And we're going to be able to talk about that on different platforms, the show on here, et cetera. So I'm very excited about yeah, that. Yeah. And the draft scheduled for Wednesday, I believe that's September the 8th yes. in the office. And yes. uh, boy, that's going to be a heck of a fun of event. I uh, got a commitment from a bunch of people yep. and personalities. And, the sh- and Steve and I are also, uh, we, we've got a third chair open. We're going to get some barstool personalities involved yep. during the season as well. Yeah. And, and another thing I'm excited about is just how we're going to integrate the sports book into this, because in years past, you know, what they had done, which certainly worked for them, was they would talk about the league and the other, you know, desirable drafts and things like that. Um, but we're going to integrate the sports book a lot this year, which really wasn't in play, uh, you know, a year ago. So now we can really talk about that, talk about the props, which is something that you and I both kind of specialize in and really try to maximize the return investment for our listeners. Yeah, and we're going to also be doing videos for the sports book for Thursday night and Monday night primetime games as well uh, with some picks. And the Barstool Sportsbook now live in six states after going live in Virginia and Colorado last week, as well as Illinois, Indiana, Pennsylvania, and Michigan. More on the way soon. And without further ado, that's enough of the preamble and the intro. Let's get down to business. I know everybody's getting ready for their drafts. Let's hop to it. And we're going to start out today talking about running back rankings. We've got a few other preseason shows. We'll have a show with wide receiver rankings as well as quarterback and tight ends. But, you know, when you think of fantasy football, top of the first round, it's all about those bell cow RBs. And that's what we're going to get after today. Yeah. So running backs historically have been the baseline for all fantasy success. Like you think about Marshall Falk, Priest Holmes, Sean Alexander, LaDainian Tomlinson. I mean, these are the guys that really brought players, fantasy football players, you know, championships in years past. Things have kind of shifted over the years, but running backs are still the premium position that are the most popular position to go in the first round. You and I differ a little bit uh, in our top of the top of the ranking. So let's talk about that. Why don't you start with your uh, let's maybe start like one to Let's maybe do our top 15 just because we we see some differences there. Sounds good. And just for transparency, half point PPR is what we're going to assume with these rankings. Uh, Also, these draft rankings assume one quarterback league, not two, because when the super flex quarterback gets involved, it messes with the draft rankings and gives quarterbacks more value. All right, we'll start at the top. We're going to do top 15. I know we defer a little bit. I've got Christian McCaffrey, number one. I know last year had a lot of injuries. But just so dynamic catching the ball and running the ball. And this year, I like Joe Brady a lot, their offensive coordinator. And, you know, I know people are all over the place on Sam Darnold, but I think he's going to be more, the offense is going to be more explosive with him than Teddy Bridgewater. They've got nice weapons at receiver. I think they're going to score points. And Christian McCaffrey's my number one. It's a slam dunk to me. I mean, every single fantasy football league that drafts this year, Christian McCaffrey has to be the number one pick, unless for some reason he's some type of very odd keeper or dynasty league. Um, that has been that you've been with Christian McCaffrey, like you said, patch uh, catching, running the ball. He does it all. He's a throwback back in the Marshall Falk, Priest Holmes, Ladanian Thompson, Sean Alexander mold. You got to pick him first if you have the number one pick. Yeah, I like him bouncing back off the injury field year last yeah, year. Yeah, I mean, he produced like unlike your boy Michael Thomas last year who put up a donut in nine nine games with zero touchdowns. Uh, Christian McCaffrey produced when he was on the field. I get it. He played three games. He had a couple injuries with the ankle. Um, but I mean, the guy scores touchdowns. The guy is going to win you fantasy games and he hasn't had injury problems as in the past as a pro. Well, we both agree on the number one pick. Number two, I've got Dalvin Cook. It was a debate for me, but Cook is so explosive. Uh, He's been more healthy the last few years. That was always my biggest concern with him. I love him cutting on that dome turf in Minnesota, and I've got him second overall. Uh, it's hard to argue like the top three, I feel, are like pretty chalky. You can kind of flip flop on, you know, who's your number two, Derrick Henry or Dalvin Cook. I do have uh, Derrick Henry going number two just due to consistency. You know, he's going to be available now. The schedule's moving to 17 games. You know, he's going to be available for those. He's a touchdown machine. He does get hurt with the PPR. Like, you know, he led the league in rushing last year, uh, you know, led the league in rushing touchdowns last year. Um, but he was not the number one fantasy running back, which Alvin Kamara was, who had 21 total touchdowns touchdowns and a ton of 83 receptions so he is a guy that gets hurt with the ppr format but i still like him just due to consistency dalvin cook who is my number three rb 
I have him, you know, he hasn't played a full season yet. Um, I'm a little bit worried about his overall durability, but when he's on the field, and he's only missed a couple of games each year, but when he's on the field, he's absolutely lights out. Just the the risk aversion myself at the top would lead me to go Henry. Yeah, and Cook gets catches more passes as yep. well, and so I, I lean him over Henry. It's very very close though because hey, your best ability is availability, and the running backs. It's hard to stay healthy. Yep. At the running back position in the NFL. Well, number four, I've got Alvin Kamara. Yep. And I, my thoughts on him. I'm a big Saints fan. You mentioned the 21 touchdowns last year. Couple of things on him. He he didn't rush for a thousand yards last year. The Saints Has never rushed for a thousand yards. The Saints don't like to give him. To, he's not a twenty or twenty five carry type guy. No. So much of his value is in the receptions. And I don't think Drew Brees, who is notorious for checking down to the running back, him leaving, whether it's Taysom Hill or Jameis Winston, I, I think that hurts Kamara's value catching the football. Uh, he had a lost year with a high ankle sprain in twenty. 19. I still think he's going to have a very good year. What I'm concerned about with the Saints, there's a real lack of playmakers other than him, especially Mike Thomas being out right now. I still have him number four, but I don't know that he's going to quite have the year he had last year. So what is the 75th best player in the NFL, Michael Thomas? That's a ridiculous <laughs> ranking from uh, the NFL players. Um, <laughs> for a guy who's going to miss probably half the season, if not more. Slam um, boy. <laughs> Slam boy, yes. 149 catches two years ago. Yeah, it was the <laughs> best, best of 2021. So, um, Yes, Alvin Kamara. What gives me a little bit of pause with Kamara, and I have him as as RB6, is just you never want to take a guy who's having a career year touchdown-wise. That's not really scalable. Like, you look at the year before, he had far, far fewer touchdowns. Yeah, barely had any. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there was a point in the season, I think in December, where he had two touchdowns. Uh, I think he improved to maybe like five or six for the year, uh, but he was way, way down. So it is good to buy low on these guys. I think you're buying very high with Kamara. And it's also, we don't know his quarterback situation. Is it going to be Jameis? Is it going to be Taysom Hill? Probably Jameis. But with Taysom Hill, who figures to play a bigger role regardless of what it is, Kamara's production suffered a lot with Taysom Hill on the field. He went from, I think, six and a half targets a game to just over two. Um, I would be very cautious with him. And that's, again, me being a little bit risk averse. I don't want to take him if I have like a top three or four pick just due to that factor. That's fair. Well, number five, I've got Zeke Elliott, who did have a bad year last year, but the Cowboys' entire offensive line got hurt last year. We all know about Dak's injury. I think they're going to score a ton of points. Granted, he's not putting up quite the production he did his first few years. Tony Pollard cuts into it a good bit, but he's still good catching the ball, and I think he's going to score a lot more touchdowns with Dak and the line being healthy. Yeah, I think you're a little bit higher on – on Zeke than most people right now in uh, in drafts he's going or his ADP actually is RB five in drafts so you're actually kind of right in line with that um, I have him at RB seven I do think he's going to bounce back but like how much he's he's been declining in performance every year the past three years so can he bounce back to that you know seventy catch guy um, and also you know running for 13, 1500 yards and be you know kind of double digit touchdowns if he can absolutely he's going to be worth you know a top three pick um, but you know, you got to be a little bit risk averse with your first round pick. I feel. I, I just I feel like he's going to score a bunch of touchdowns. That's the thing I feel really. I mean, good their about. offense is loaded. Yeah, can they all stay healthy? We shall see. Uh, who do you have at number five? Uh, number five, I got Aaron Jones, who's okay. a guy that I don't want to say you're buying low on him, but he I believe he led the league in touchdowns two years ago. He was not. Uh, as prolific of a touchdown score, but he is a guy, especially with half point PPR, that is going to catch a ton of passes. He's going to run the ball a lot. Jamal Williams, who is kind of stealing some of his catches, is gone. Their backup running back is AJ Dillon, who is a potential threat to take some goal line work. But with those additional receptions, I like Aaron Jones to be a potential like 80, 90 catch guy. So uh, in addition to the rushing yards, I think it's going to be the free Aaron Jones movement all year. uh, And he is going to uh, have a monster, monster campaign. I've got him at number six. I don't have anything to add because I agree with you. Sure. Yeah. I mean, he's going to be great. I got Kamara at six. So uh, we're kind of in lockstep with our, you know, top seven. I've got Nick Chubb at number seven. Uh, I I know that Kareem Hunt's there and cuts in a little bit, but Cleveland's got one of the top offensive lines in football. I think they found their identity. You know, last year they went out, they signed Jack Conklin, one of the best right tackles from Tennessee. They drafted Jedrick Wills. They invested in that O-line. They're going to be physical. They're going to run the ball. And Chubb got banged up a few games last year, still had an excellent year. I've got him number seven. I actually have him RB4, and he doesn't catch a ton of passes. That's where Kareem Hunt kind of poses the problem. But he is just so consistent. Um, It is a crowded backfield. 
But he is the guy on the goal line. You know, Kareem Hunt only really saw success when Nick Chubb was out last year. I think a healthy Nick Chubb behind that number one offensive line in football is going to have like right around 20 touchdowns this year. Wow. I really like Nick Chubb. Um, I, I would draft him four, five, no problem. Wow. Hey, look, he should score a lot of touchdowns. You know they're they're committed to the running game, though. That was oh, yeah. the thing they oh, realized. Yeah. You got to protect Baker with the running game. They invest in the O-line, and look how, you know, all the momentum they've got. Uh, number eight, I've got Saquon Barkley. Yep, I do, too. He's – I'll let you kind of yeah, go. Well, I'm worried. First of all, John Tolan, I don't love his injury history. I don't love uh, – the thing with him, he's a boomer bust type guy. He's the guy that if it goes right – he could help win your league, but there's a lot of risk there. I mean, yep. the injury list is long. And, you know, you look at this Giants team, you know, in theory, you know, if everybody was healthy with Kenny Galladay, who's already banged up, Evan Ingram, they drafted Tony out of Florida, they, Sterling Shepard in the slot, Barkley. In theory, that's some great weapons, but man, there's a lot of questions of the O line. They're all injury prone. I don't know. He, he's a boomer bust guy. I like the upside on Saquon if you can get him at RB8, but I'm not taking him in my top five. Yeah, he is definitely uh, a risky guy just because, you know, you alluded to it. He's coming off an injury. He hasn't been good in two years. But when he played, you know, two years ago, he was incredible. He was 2,000 total yards and he had 15 touchdowns. He was going 1-1 in some drafts the year after. Injuries have been a huge concern. But, yeah, the, the Giants appear – to have put the right pieces in place. Can they put it all together? We're already hearing murmurs about uh, like workload. And is he going to be ready for week one? Is he going to have a full workload by that time? They don't really have a lot of guys behind him that I'm worried about. But the fact that you're hearing these conversations, it's what, August 16th we're taping this right now? That's not. I don't want to hear that about my first round pick. So I <laughs> do not love Saquon Barkley. He's my RB8, so we're in lockstep there. All right, number nine. This is where we start to disagree a little bit. I'm drinking the Najee Harris Kool-Aid huge. Uh, I, I realize that taking him top n- number nine overall is very high, but I've watched college football for a whole, whole heck of a lot of years, and he was one of the most impressive running backs I've ever seen. And the thing with him, he's a full three down back. He can catch the ball out of the backfield, and I think that's a huge part of the value. I think he's going to score a lot of touchdowns. He's also going to catch way more balls than people think. If I do have a concern, I've got some questions about the Steelers' offensive line, their rebuilding, so that part worries me a little bit. But the main reason I like him, three down back, I think he's going to score a lot of touchdowns. He's going to catch a lot of balls. And for them to draft him 24th overall, they're going to feed him. They're going to pound him, and I'm going with it. So what I like about him is he is a pass catcher. So he's not going to have to come off the field on third down. But you look at the Steelers right now in that AFC North. Are they are they the worst team in that division? Bengals Probably. for sure. I mean the Bengals are kind of on the up and up with a healthy Joe Burrow. I don't think they're better than the Steelers yet. Okay, so let's put the Steelers third. Right, they are like they very are clearly behind no, the they Browns. Are, very no, they third. are that. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. So. <laughs> How much are they really going to be running the ball? So we're going to be counting on Najee. Like, I know that they have a commitment to the run. You know, Matt Cannon is kind of a new, uh, you know, offense coordinator. He was a QB coach, but he has a new offensive mind. Uh, but they have three up to four new starters on the offensive line. I have a lot of pause. Ranking him ninth overall, like, you're taking this guy first round. No, I'm ta- I, I am. I'm taking him back, for, back first round, early second round. I, have, team right now. I would feel terrible my fantasy team if I'm taking Najee Harris first round. I have him at... Uh, RB 14. So like, I like him like rookie running back. I love drafting rookie running backs, but you need to get value for them. I don't feel like there's any value with Najee Harris at RB nine. I mean, he could certainly prove me wrong. His, his pro comp is Matt Forte who, you know, came in year one and was immediate, you know, difference maker. I'm I'm a little hesitant with Najee Harris. That's fair. I love it. I'm glad we disagree on something. Uh, Najee Harris, I look for his receiving value. I think that's going to be the underrated thing about him, and I think he's going to get in the end zone a lot. Look, he was so special at Alabama. Obviously, Bama's O-line and how dominant they were. It's going to be a different deal in the NFL, but I'm trusting my instincts. But but you're, you're taking an unproven guy. Who had a great college career and you know probably will be very good over like Jonathan Taylor. I am who kind of lit the league on fire towards the end of last year. Won a lot of guys, the won a lot of fantasy owners their league titles. And you're taking a guy who's a little bit unproven on a completely new team with uh, a new offensive line, and you're taking that guy over Jonathan Taylor. I am. Right. I am. It has to do with the receiving and the three down back factor. Uh, Taylor tore it up down the stretch, but Naheem Hines is third down back, and Taylor's value is totally ru- running based. There. 
it'll be interesting to see what their team looks like with Marlon Mack back this year because I know Marlon Mack got 100% also, of the also carries. Also, the quarterback issue questions too. Yes, yeah, they have they have a lot of injury issues, but and Quentin Nelson is the top guard in the NFL, or one of them is already out too. Yep. So we shall see. Who do you have number nine? Uh, number nine, I have in, uh, a receiving back as well, but his name is Antonio Gibson of the Washington football team. I think Washington's going to be really good this year. Uh, Antonio Gibson played receiver for a couple of years in college, so he is a guy who can catch a ton of passes. Ryan Fitzpatrick does check the ball down a fair amount. Um, he's a guy that has pocket mobility to escape, but he does not. <laughs> he's not really able to evade the rush a long time. Antonio Gibson is going to be a really safe outlet for him, and he's also a really good runner. So I like Antonio Gibson as a top 10 RB. First round, I probably wouldn't love him, but like top of the second, like if I had that uh, the pick out the turn, the 12-13, I would have no problem taking him. The only question about him, I agree that he has the receiving skills going back to college. J.D. McKissick, one of the NFL's yep. leader in receptions uh, at the running back position, and so that I don't know that I think that won't help. Yeah, I think a lot of that was kind of towards the end of the season when, where when Gibson was banged up. When Gibson was banged up, and also you had Alex Smith who just couldn't really throw the ball past ten yards, and that was really his only option. Uh, I think with Fitz Magic at the at the helm, it's going to be a little bit of a different story with Antonio Gibson, who I like as a three down back in Washington. I've got Jonathan Taylor at number ten. I know he closed the year really strong. I, I just the only reason I've got him below. Harris is the quarterback thing and the fact that he doesn't catch many balls, but I still really like him. I mean, he, you know, was one of those running backs that started slow last year, but tore it up down the stretch. And Indy does have a very good offensive line. Very, very good offensive line. So, yeah, he's a guy that won me a couple leagues last year. So I'm a, I'm very high in Jonathan Taylor, but like I have him at RB12 with a half point PPR. He Right now his ADP is, is RB9. I have seen him all as high as like RB6 on some experts rankings. He's just a very natural runner. He's a one cut guy and he can get upfield really quick. He's a north south runner. Um, and he is a much better than advertised receiver. I think he had like 36 catches or something like that last year, which is pretty good for a guy that we heard could not catch the ball at all. How much of that was Phillip Rivers and the offense and scheme, et cetera? We'll see. Carson Wentz certainly holds on to the ball a little bit longer. Um, but, you know, Jonathan Taylor, I like, I don't love. He, I would not spend a first-round pick on Jonathan Taylor. I've got Austin Eckler at number 11. I also have Austin Eckler at number 11. I mean, just like, if you're in a PPR league, boost him up a ton. Because he's a guy who I think will get 100 catches. Like, he is just that, like, he is that dude. He get, he runs a ball a lot, but he you're not drafting him necessarily for the rushing yards. Overall, he is going to be a big time volume guy where you might look at the up at the end of the day. He might have eight to 10 carries, 12 carries, but he might have 20 touches overall. My concern about him is on the goal line. He does not get a lot of goal line work. So you're going to have to make up with that with receiving. I like him as RB 11, like middle top, top middle of the second round, like around that 14 yeah, to 18 full point PPR league. His value is going to be monster. Time, and I yeah. do think that the chargers with Herbert, they're going to score some points. Yep. And so I like that offense. They put on that fast track out in Cali. Joe Lombardi coming over from the saints, being the offensive coordinator. So, you know, he's going to draw up some things that are Alvin Kamara like. So kind of think of it like that with the, with Austin Eckler. I've got David Montgomery at 12, who quietly also finished really strong down the stretch last year. Uh, I believe it was RB number four. RB four and half point PPR, which is crazy when you think about David Montgomery. I know. And the thing was, he had kind of a slower first half. And you think about that Bears offense, certainly wasn't the most sexy last year, but he closed extremely strong. My only concern with Montgomery is Treat Cohen being out last year. Montgomery did have good receiving numbers. I think those are going to take a little bit of a dip uh, with Cohen being back. But still, he's going to be a focal point of that offense. The Bears are going to try to run the ball to protect either Justin Fields or Andy Dalton. I kind of expect it's going to be Fields, but I've got him number 12. Well, today, Peter King penned a piece with uh, with Matt Nagy, who said that he wants to sit Justin Fields the whole year and is like pretty committed to that, which I think is such a lie. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't believe that. <laughs> I don't believe that for Matt, a second. Matt Nagy's on the hot seat. Like, there's no way he's gonna risk. He's not gonna white knight for the city of Chicago that's about to fire him to save Justin Fields' career. Like, there's no chance. The Bears have a buy in week ten. If they're four and five or less. They're going to play the kid. If he doesn't earn the job first, he looked outstanding on Saturday in the afternoon slate. So I wouldn't be surprised if Justin Fields opens the year. Matt Nagy, what a fucking liar. Like, that little scamper dude. he had was awesome. Yeah, like for the touch. Yeah, he's he's a, I mean, he's a player. He was my number two quarterback this year. After, oh, after I like him a lot. Yeah. 
I like him too, and I, I'm call, I used to call bluffs for a living when I was a pro poker player, and I think Nagy is uh, – I, I don't buy that for one second. It's just a lie. It's just a fine <laughs> lie. I've got Antonio Gibson at 13. I know you're higher on him than I am, but I still like him. Yep. I like him a good bit. Uh, I've got him at 13. You know, you already talked about how much you like him. I've got Joe Mixon at 14. I'm not as big on Mixon as most. They they also have a crappy O-line, um, but – He's still going to be solid. I mean, I think the volume is there for him. I, I do think the Bengals at Burrow can stay healthy. He'll score more points this year. So Mixon I've got at RB10. Okay. Uh, so last year he got banged up, only played in a couple of games. The prior two years, he was an 1,100-yard-plus guy. Uh, he's also a three-down back. So you look at, like, bell cow backs or anchor backs, guys that are going to be available for you at all times. He is a guy that like that. He can do receiving work. The Bengals offense, I just think is improved. Like they signed Riley reef. So now they got two tackles with Riley reef and John Williams. They drafted Carmen Jackson. And they're going to kick inside to guard. They drafted Jamar chase. Who's going to open up things on the outside. AJ green. You know, he wasn't really a threat last year. No, He's no, gone. Burrow was, Burrow was forcing it to him so much early in the year. Right. So I, I think the Bengals are going to be better than people think. It honestly wouldn't surprise me if the Bengals challenge the Steelers for that third spot in the AFC North. So I am buying stock on Joe Mixon. Again, this is a buy low Joe Mixon. I like RB 10. Okay. And then do we were doing top fit. We're kind of doing our top 15. Yeah. Uh, number 15. I got Claude Edwards, a uh, I worry about his frame a little bit. Uh, certainly Casey remade their offensive line, did all kinds of stuff on that <laughs> front after what happened in the Super Bowl when <laughs> they might as well have not even been on the field when the Bucks front seven dominated so much in the, in that beating. Uh, but Edwards Lair, I, I like, and you know, Daryl Williams is their backup. Mm-hmm. So Edwards Lair is the guy. He also can catch the ball. I, I just don't know if he's like a 20 carry a game guy. He also kind of struggles on the goal line. And so that yes. kind of has me down on him a little bit. He had that huge Thursday night game against Houston to start last year. Where everybody was going nuts, but uh, I've got him at 15. Yeah. I mean, he was three for 28 on red zone carries, converting those into touchdowns. Like he is not a touchdown score, but they got rid of Le'Veon Bell uh, Clyde Edwards Hilaire was much better before they signed Le'Veon Bell. He's now gone. I like him. I have him at RB 13. I think last year, when you look at the expectations for him, they were sky. I mean, Lewis Riddick, who might be a, a GM in a year, drafted him 1 1, like number one overall last <laughs> year. So the, he is in a great scheme. The Chiefs offense, you know, nobody has to say how explosive they are. They're, they're going to put up points a ton, but can Clyde Edwards Hilaire, Clyde Edwards Hilaire, punch it into the end zone because last year he just couldn't get it done. He's a smaller back. He's got receiving skills, but can he actually get a job, get it done in the paint? And, and the thing is, it's such a well-known thing that he struggles on the short yardage. They're not going to give him that many short yardage carries. I just can't see that. They, I just don't see it. I mean, that's kind of a known thing. So that part of it concerns me as well. So we went through our top 15. want to touch on just a couple of other guys, maybe that you like more than their sure. average draft position, yep. uh, kind of deeper sleeper type guys. Uh, I've got a few as well. Um, but I'll let you go ahead. Sure. So a guy that I love right now, he's going uh, in half point PPR ADP at RB 30 is Javante Williams. He's a rookie. Pookie Williams at a UNC. He is right now. He's the backup uh, in Denver. Melvin Gordon was working at the start as the starter. Melvin Gordon didn't play in the first preseason game, nursing a groin injury. Javante Williams averaged almost six yards of carry in his, in his debut. He is a guy that is just. He forces missed tackles at a rate we've never seen before. He was 0.48 missed tackles per carry in college, which is the highest number pro football focus has ever seen. He can catch the ball a little bit, uh, and he's just a tough runner. Like, think Nick Chubb. He is very similar to that. In this Denver offense where they are going to run the ball, like whoever is that quarterback, Drew Locke, Teddy Bridgewater, it doesn't really matter. They're not going to compete with Derek Carr, Patrick Mahomes, Justin Herbert in that division. They're just not. So they're going to run the ball, and they have a Vic Fangio-led team, old school defense, running the football. We'll get into this in a minute, but like Javante Williams is my favorite prop this year with over eight eight hundred and a half rushing yards. But we'll 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 talk about that momentarily. All right, one of the guys I like a lot. And this is especially true if it's a full point, but we're assuming it's a half point PPR. I like Chase Edmonds a lot. I think that he's a huge reason why Kenyon Drake is now in Las in Las Vegas. They also brought James Conner over from Pittsburgh. Conner yep. struggles to stay healthy, and I just don't know when you look at that Arizona offense. It's a spread offense. I don't know how much Connor necessarily 
fits that scheme. I do think Connor will be getting the goal line type carries, but I, I think a huge part of the reason Jay, Drake in there is because they believe in Edmonds, and I think they're going to look to get him the ball, and he's going to be one of the best running backs as far as catching the football, and I think he's underrated. He's a guy I'm looking at. I'm way lower him. I'm a, uh, he's my RB36 okay, just, because there is, just because there is so much competition right there. You know, James Conner, you do figure who – James Conner is a decent goal line back. Like, I think he had like 12 spikes a couple of years ago. Um, he's a nice – goal line player but yeah if chase Edmond gets a majority of the work um he he could certainly be a factor right now he's going adp rb 28 so you are a bit higher than him okay i got him 25 so yep. just yeah. a slight just slightly up uh i've got a couple more as well i like raheem most 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 hurt yep. more than most uh i realize you know well tevin coleman not being in san fran anymore he's now a new york jet doesn't hurt you know the, the, the niners have kind of been a rotation under shanahan and Trey Sermon, the third-round pick out of Ohio State, could be a factor in the second half of the year, but I don't think he's going to come on early. And they also have Jeffrey Wilson, but I, I just believe in Mostert. I, I think he's a game-breaker. I think that's a team that's going to run the ball behind Trent Williams with Kyle Shanahan, and I, I've got him ranked a little higher than most people do. Yeah, I mean, right now in ADPs, he's going at, at RB25. And I got 22. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's still higher than the ADP. So um, he's a guy in the playoffs last year – that went nuts. Like I think he had like 220 rushing yards in the NFC championship game. Um, can he do that over a full season? Like we haven't really seen anyone in San Fran stay healthy long enough to do that. Is Trey Sermon a guy that worries you a little bit if you're a Raheem Mostert owner? Well, I kind of think when you're looking at rookie running backs, just in general, so often you see them kind of struggle early in the year and then come on late. Like what we saw with Jonathan Taylor last sure, year. I yep. feel like that's a very common thing. I, I would be. I am worried about summer, maybe second half of the year, but I, I don't think early on he's going to be as much of a factor. Yep. Um, one guy that I like a lot more is another rookie, and it's Michael Carter um, with the Jets. So he is a guy, especially with PPR, um, that you're going to want to boost up because he's going to catch a ton of passes. He's a smaller guy, uh, kind of like a. He kind of plays like Devonte Freeman uh, in his in his heyday with with the Falcons. Smaller guy can run the ball, can catch. I think the Jets are going to be trailing a lot, and I think he is a guy. When you look at that backfield with like Michael P. Ryan, um, you know, I'm not super confident that uh, Tevin Coleman. I'm not super confident that they're going to be able to hold off Michael Carter, especially you know when trailing in games with PPR. Yeah, the Coleman is a good receiving back. He comes over LaFleur's brother as their offensive coordinator, uh, kind of similar to that Shanahan whole system. Uh, I think Coleman will catch some balls and be a factor, but Coleman, same thing, the rookie thing. I think Carter's a guy that could really come on in the second half of the year. Yeah, absolutely. I think, yeah, again, you got to be patient if you're drafting these rookie running backs because, yeah, they're not, they might not hit week one. I, a few years ago, and this is embarrassing to admit, I drafted Alvin Kamara in the last round of a fantasy draft his rookie year. And his first, I think, three or four games, he did nothing. Like, nothing. Like, he, I think he returned some kicks. Um, and I dropped him. And the next game, he blew up. And ever since then, I've been like, all right, I got to hold these got, guys got to at least. got to have patience on it. And it's also a good strategy, too, when the rookie starts slow. You, you know, you can kind of send low. out some trade offers. Yeah, because yeah, a lot of people get real frustrated about the playing time and aren't willing, especially if teams are struggling early in your fantasy league and they need to win now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's get into some draft day dilemmas because, Shay, I know you've been getting a lot of the same questions. A lot of people, especially when they get in the fifth pick this year, we've been hearing a lot yep. of dilemmas. Yep. Okay, so let's let's kind of put this on the clock. So we're going to mock like a 12-team league, um, half-point PPR, and then Ben Mintz is going to be on the clock with pick number five, which I think right now is the pick to decide. That's the pick that you don't want because yeah. you either got to go in too early on a receiver. Maybe do you draft Travis Kelsey like five overall? Like that's incredibly high for a tight end. Do you drop to that second tier of running backs? Because when we look at when we look at the top four backs and the top four fantasy picks, for the most part, it's pretty chalky as far as Christian McCaffrey is going to be one. And then you can have in almost any order, Dalvin Cook, Derrick Henry, Alvin Kamara. So let's put you on the clock. I'm going to queue up a timer. A minute and a half. All right. So the guys that are going to go um, first pick is going to or timer. Good. All right. So first pick, we're going to go Christian McCaffrey. Second pick. We'll go Derek Henry to follow my rankings. Third pick, Dalvin Cook. And then fourth pick, Kamara. Half point PPR, Ben Mintz. You're on the clock. Fifth overall pick. 
Who are you hoping was going to be there? And now, how are you panicking? What's going on? Well, I, I would hope for any of those top four. And then this this is kind of a tough situation. And here's what I'm thinking in my head. First of all, I, I'm leaning toward going away from running back here, actually. I okay. don't want to force the running back thing. Yep. I would rather take a guy. You mentioned Kelsey. I'm thinking about Devontae Adams. I'm thinking about Tyreek Hill. Because I, I feel like I know what I'm getting with those guys. I sure. don't want to take force a fifth pick here at running back and have somebody be a bust and just destroy your team. I'm leaning to Devontae Adams. 18 touchdowns last year. I love the way they get him the ball in the red zone. He's going to catch a ton of balls. That Aaron Rodgers and Adams chemistry, phenomenal. That whole offense is designed to get him the football. I'm taking Devontae Adams fifth. I know he's a phenomenal number one receiver, and I'm going to just piece together running back later. I'm not going to overdo it forcing a running back here because I just feel like so often in fantasy – you know, you, you take a bust running back first round, somebody that's injury prone, whatever, it, it's hard to get back from that. Yeah. It's it's a tough spot because, yeah, I think Devontae Adams is the right pick here. But then if we're being honest, like it is very, very early for a receiver to be going, even at half point PPR. But I, I agree with you because, you know, with your RB5, you'd be going Zeke. Devontae Adams, fifth pick overall is a bit rich, but I think you actually made the right move here because – there's so much uncertainty around the other guys. Yeah, that's my thing. Like, I reiterate what I said. I just don't want to force a running back pick to take a running back if I'm not truly in love with him. If this is a PPR draft, I think it's a no-brainer. Fifth pick, Devonta Adams, easy. If it's a standard league, I don't really know that you can go receiver that early, so I might err on like the more cautious, like Nick Chubb um, or you know Aaron Jones or, or Zeke, one of these guys, just to kind of make it through. But half point PPR, I think you are taking advantage of that scoring system properly with Devonta Adams. And again, I mean, he just you know Miller time all the time. He is in the end zone nonstop. Also, I want to thank another one of our sponsors. Now that the world's opening back up, so many new thrills are on the horizon. And whether you've been in a relationship for years or just getting started or excited to get back out there and meet some new people, when the moment comes, you want to be ready. Roman ready. Go to GetRoman.com slash Barstool now to talk to U.S. licensed healthcare professional. With Roman, you can get a free online evaluation, ongoing care for erectile dysfunction, all from the comfort and privacy of your own home. Roman Ready means confidence. The confidence that you know that you can rise to the occasion at any moment, just like I am in these fantasy football drafts. We're looking at the Summer of Love 2021 version, and Roman wants to make sure you can participate in your way, whether that be as a single person or a couple who would rather still rather stay in with each other. Go to GetRoman.com slash Barstool today. And if you're prescribed, get 50% off your first month of ED treatment. Make sure you're ready to have confidence and control this summer. Roman ready. You know, Devonta Adams is Roman ready whenever they get on the goal line because Aaron Rodgers are just throwing him fade balls. Uh, they're running them behind the line of scrimmage, getting movement. They put him in the slot a lot. Uh, Roman... Devonta Adams is rolling ready when they get on the one yard line. They're not running. Aaron Jones or AJ Dillon, they're throwing the ball to Devonta Adams. 18 spikes last year. I yeah, mean, lots crazy. of Miller times coming for lots him. Lots of Miller times. Lots of Miller times for Devonta Adams coming up. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's talk about some some sports book props yes. that we really like. So uh, Ben and I went through the Barcel sports book, which again is available in six states right now. That will be available in a few more very very shortly. But these are props that we looked at with different running backs that we really really like this year let's kind of go through them and explain why i'll let you kick it off yeah and this is going to be a fun element of the fantasy football factory is tying this up to the barstool sports book so many different ways to gamble but you know they have totals on the games but also on the season and i've got a few running back props i like and we'll start i've got chris carson over 975 and a half yards i know pete carroll loves to run the ball the big thing with him is staying healthy i think that if he stays healthy he's going to get there uh 11 or 1200 yards keep in mind also a 17 game season. I've got David Montgomery over 975 and a half, the exact same total, yep. uh, by the way. I just think the Bears are going to be committed to the running game. You know, we saw him come on strong last year. I have Zeke Elliott over 1,100 and a half yards. I'm buying the bounce back there. I know that's one you you and I have debated. Yep. Uh, Zeke Elliott, I, I just think the off the line injuries and the DAC injury last year, a little bit of a lost year, I think they bounce back strong. And then I've also got Leonard Fournette over 675 and a half yards. He came on strong in the playoffs last year. You know, he got signed late. Yep. 
Ronald Jones was the RB1 and may still be this year, but Tampa's going to play with a lot of leads. And uh, I also think Fournette, a guy that's super motivated to be in Tampa, he's got a Super Bowl ring. He respects the culture of Tom Brady and Bruce Arians. And, you know, we, we've seen him be a little bit of a malcontent before. I think Fournette's going to help close a lot of games. 675 and a half means he needs to average 40 yards a game. I think he gets done. Plus the look good, feel good, play good. He switched from 28 to number seven. So he's rocking the LSU oh, seven this year. Yes, yes. So with the single digits being allowed, um, I guess he bought out his jersey stock and chose to to flip early. You're not seeing a lot of veterans do that, but he was one that was like, I need that yeah. number seven. He and Patrick Peterson, the seven yes. gang LSU guys. Yeah. Awesome. Well, what are some of your the ones you like? Um, so my favorite one is Javante Williams, who we talked about. Um, over 800 and a half rushing yards. I think you're just getting good value here. He had 1,140 yards last year with 19 touchdowns while splitting time with Michael Carter. He is going to be potentially in a little bit of timeshare, at least early, with Melvin Gordon. But I think, again, the way Denver is going to want to play football this year, they're going to want to run the ball and play ball control with that those really high-powered offenses within their division. I think he's a solid, solid bet to be over 800 and a half rushing yards. I like him to go way over that. So, uh, again, he's my RB17. So he's a guy that I really, really like to surpass that. Um, he was 35th, 35th overall pick in the draft. Also, one more thing with this. The Broncos had a 10% drop rate, which is the worst by the receivers, which is a worse with a, the worst rate since 2017. I would expect a lot of drives, a lot more drafts to continue this year, even if Drew Locke is the quarterback. So I would I like to see them have more snaps on offense. So I like Javante Williams. Um, one that we are on the opposite side of the fence on. J.K. Dobbins. So over under is eight and a half touchdowns. You, my friend, are the over. Why are you riding the over? Okay, here? I will say on this, I have cooled on it a touch because I've looked through all the splits with him and Gus Edwards. Because mm-hmm. last year, you know, Dobbins is emerging young guy. You know, had the great career at Ohio State. Last year, he had nine touchdowns. Yep. But it is Edwards signed a two year contract, and it is a split. I do think I like taking running backs on teams that have the running quarterback. I think Lamar Jackson just opens up running lanes so much as a Ravens team. Uh, that's going to run the football. I do think eight and a half is about right. Like I, I, I'll, I'll say I, I lean over, but I'm not huge on it like I was a week ago. And I'm worried Edwards is just big. The bigger going to take too many carries. I mean, he had 29 carries in the red zone last year, which is a lot. He converted touchdowns on 27 and a half percent of them on eight of them. Uh, he just kind of worries me as a guy. And he had nine touchdowns last year. So it's not like he can't do it. But the fact that Baltimore has added so many weapons on the outside. I know Rashad Bateman recently went down with a groin injury. But Sammy Watkins, Tylon Wallace, you know, Mark Andrews is always a threat around that goal line. Lamar Jackson as well, just keeping it himself. And with Gus Edwards, the new contract, I am selling my J.K. Dobbins stock. And I was a big J.K. Dobbins guy last year, but I am selling my J.K. Dobbins stock. I like under eight and a half touchdowns for this year. Check out, we'll have a whole lot more props on the Barstool Sportsbook uh, season long. We'll be doing week to week as well. Uh, Love that they do that. Love the player props for the games. I think it's a fun element that we're looking forward to helping grow this year. I want to get two more props in here. Go for it. One of them I love, love, love. So the the three that I really, really like are Javante Williams over 800 and a half. J.K. Dobbins under eight and a half touchdowns. Mike Davis, who's a guy for the Falcons that is going to be a value guy in your fantasy leagues. I mean, right now he's going at RB 23 and half point uh, PPR. That's his average draft position right now. I have him at RB 21. I just think that he offers the kind of versatility, both running and catching the ball to make a difference on your fantasy team. I think he could be like a rock solid RB2 this year in Atlanta. So we look at last year, 642 rushing yards, only in 12 starts, and he had Teddy Bridgewater, a quarterback. So that's naturally going to shrink the field. Um, But why I like this bet the most is their RB2 situation. RB2 in Atlanta is Cordero Patterson. This guy is a kick returner. And a wide receiver. I know he's a first round wide receiver like forever ago. A long, long <laughs> like time, 20 long time ago. Yeah. He's a kick returner. The fact that he's RB2, we have Arthur Smith coming in to Atlanta, who was uh, the offensive coordinator in Tennessee last year. So he had Derrick Henry and just rode the crap out of Derrick Henry. I mean, he had you know 350 plus carries last year. I like Mike Smith, uh, Mike Davis to definitely surpass. 800 and a half rushing yards. I know he averaged 3.9 yards a carry last year, but I mean, we're talking, if he averages that again, we're talking a little bit over 200 carries to get the job done. 
Mike Davis, I think is a pretty good value at eight hundred and a half. I like that line a lot. But so much of fantasy is workload and time yes. share. And that's that's what you like so much about him. And I'll say this, Atlanta on the on in the dome type, they tend to play higher scoring games too. Yeah, and they play a lot of close games. I mean, I know they have a different coaching staff, but they played 10 one-score games last year. So it's not like they're out of the ball game. He's going to be running the ball a lot. Mike Davis over 800 and a half rushing yards. Um, two more I'll just mention. Yeah, go for I, it. I, I don't love them as much, but like these are my other the, the top three are my very these are my tier two of Barcel Sportsbooks bets. Um Clyde Edwards Elair over 850 and a half rushing yards. I think again, like workload. Um Everyone's so down on him just due to fantasy last year. He still averaged four and a half yards a carry, 4.4 yards per carry. Um, I, this isn't a fantasy thing that's necessarily tied to touchdowns. Again, we mentioned he's three for 28 on red zone. That's not going to matter here. He just needs the overall volume. We look at 2019. Damian Williams and Shady McCoy rushed for 963 yards on 212 carries. That's over four and a half yards a clip. You don't think that. Uh, Clyde Edwards Elair can do that. I mean, I definitely think he, better than Damian Williams and Shady, McC- uh, Shady McCoy's corpse. I mean, I love Shady McCoy, but that uh, the 2019 Shady McCoy was not Shady McCoy. So uh, I definitely think Clyde Edwards Elair is a solid, solid value to get over 850 and a half. And then Joe Mixon, uh, I'm, I'm high on him. I'm you know three down guy over 1,000 and a half rushing yards. He'll obviously, he'll obviously have to stay healthy, but didn't really have any injury concerns prior to last year. He averaged 20 carries a game before the injury or just a shade under uh, improved offensive weapons. We talked about their offensive line. He's been 1,100 plus yards in 2018 and 2019, which was under Zach Taylor. So I like him to repeat that and kind of be in the I think he's going to be more than 1,100 yards. I think he's going to be like a 12, 1,300 yard guy. One thing on Nixon, they they they, they are going to need to try to run the ball to protect Burrow coming off that knee injury. Yes, yes. Giovanni Bernard's gone, or Giovanni Bernard is Tampa. gone. He's gone to Tampa. So uh, Joe Mixon is going to be like a three down back. So I like him. You don't necessarily correlate, you know, third and longs with running the ball, but he's going to get an extra draw here and there. And I like Joe Mixon over a thousand and a half rushing yards. Love, love the props on the Barstool Sportsbook. Check those out. I uh, kind of want to run through, too, our plan. So we did the running backs this week. Yep. Next week we're going to do wide receivers. Yes, sir. And we're going to be releasing these on Tuesday morning, I believe. Yep. is the flip. We got, once again, shout out to Playboy Marty, <laughs> Martin Black, our, our producer. We're going to get these out Tuesday morning. We're going to have these on the Barstool Sportsbook YouTube channel, also on Apple and Spotify. Follow FFF Pot on Twitter. And Instagram, we're going to be going hard at all of our socials. Also, when the season comes, we're going to be having a little Sunday morning yep. uh, thing on the Barstool Sportsbook YouTube channel. We're going to go over actives and acts, uh, actives and inactives. And also, we want to hear from you guys. The beauty of fantasy football yep. is interacting with the listeners. We want to help you guys make optimal lineups. We want to discuss it with the stoolies, and we're all about it. Yeah, so every Sunday we'll be taking comments. We'll be fielding questions. After that inact- active inactive list comes out, who do you start? We're going to help you solve those dilemmas. Dear Mr. Fantasy, coming on Sundays, we're going to be here. I think one thing, if I can just elaborate for a minute, that I've learned is like if you're going to be a podcast brand here, you have to make it a lifestyle. And we're definitely going to make fantasy football a lifestyle for the next several months. So come on this route with us. Come on with it. Once again, I want to thank Hank for showing faith in Mr. Shea and I. We are going to rock this thing. I, I hope that uh, he we don't kill each other over all the Buck Saint stuff. But uh, regardless of that, we're going to have some great fantasy knowledge, fantasy football factory. I want to thank everyone for listening to the first one. Follow us on social at FFF Pod. And uh, we're going to be back next week. I think it's time to punch out. Punch out the clock. Cheers. Let's go. 